And then we'll go in and do the full-blown one. Uh, the full-blown CMA, or the complete CMA, uh, creates, so oh, about a 16 to 21 page report. It looks pretty impressive when you put it together. It has all these little components to it, like agent resumes and cover letters and bar charts and graphs and all these types of things. But it's all done through templates. So you kind of need to go in and set at least one of them up and kind of pick all the modules and how you want it to look. And then once you do that, the next time you go in, everything's all in place, and you can run uh, complete CMA as quickly as you can uh, bad CMA, right? Mm -hmm. So we're going to kind of look at all the templates and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, I have a property in mind that we might pull some comps for, and it's my uh, grandma's house in Oakland. Now, if you know a lot about the subject property, you're in good shape, right? You can just come in and kind of start your comp search. If you don't know a whole lot about the subject property, you can always do a tax search on Paragon to come up with the basic information. So if we're on Paragon, let's get to Paragon 4. We're not there already, and there you go. Um, let's go to tax in Alameda County. So we're going to go up to the navigation bar in tax yeah. in Alameda County, and it comes up with our screen. Can we go to tax? Uh, up, just tax, and then Alameda. go to tax in Alameda. And the address of the subject property, where it says minimum and maximum, is 3860 minimum. Can we do whatever property, or do you want us to stay on the uh, If we stay on the same page, it's a little easier okay. for me. But at least, you know, we'll show how to do it. And then if you'd like to, after class, we can look at some other stuff. Okay. 3860? Um, yeah. And then maximum 3860, because we're just looking for the same address, right? And then two boxes down where it says street name, we're going to put in Lusk, L-U-S-K. And because we're doing a tax search, we never put in the suffix. So we never put in street or road or court of any kind. We're going to do a count up in the right-hand side. Blue count. Have a match of one, I hope. And then search down underneath that, the green search. And here comes the name of the owner. Karen. Karen, you got it. From, <laughs> from the tax records, right? And there she is. Now, to get the full tax report, we're going to double click on Karen's name or anywhere on that line, and it comes up with a full report from the county assessor's office. So, the information that we're kind of interested in, because we're going to do comp searches, is how many bedrooms and baths and what the square footage is, because that's the basis of a, of a comp search uh, for comparison properties, right? And you'll notice in our standpoint, um, Karen has a two-bedroom uh, house and with one bath. And the square footage is what, about 1,200 or something like that? Can anybody find it up there for me? 1,029. How much is it? 1,029 square feet. So when we do our comp search, we're going to try to locate properties that are um, equal to this so that we can do our, our valuation. Okay? Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So first thing to do, right, if you don't know a lot about the property, do a tax search. All right. CMA. Up on the navigation bar, we're going to start off with the CMA button. And when we do that, up in the middle panel, you have all, for the quick CMA, you have all the different property types, and we're going to go to residential. So it's CMA up on the navigation bar. In the middle, we're going to go to residential, and it's going to come up with our search page. So CMA, residential, uh, in the middle, there we go, or whatever type you're doing, right? Perfect. Okay. Here's our page. So property type is the first box. We're going to open it up. Karen's house is a single-family detached house, so we're going to go ahead and pick detached for property type. You see that up on top? Let me show my right hand. Oh, oh, you already did. <laughs> you know, just break my life. <laughs> I basically know. I, I, I saw you going through the loop. Okay. If I can learn one thing today, I'll be happy. Okay. We'll try our best. <laughs> uh, without shining my light. 
Okay, and uh, so we'll close that. The next one is what? Status? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, different ways to do things, right? Different things. We're going to pull actives because we want to know what's on the market right now. What's what's on the market? What's our what our competition is doing? We're going to do solds because we want to know what's sold recently in the area. And we're going to do pendings because we like to know what's in escrow and, and it's going to tell us how long something took to get into escrow, which is kind of an indication of the market. We can also do expireds or withdrawns. Uh, CMAs are kind of this huge educational process, especially for the homeowner, because what tends to happen is the homeowner always thinks their home is worth more than what it actually is, right? So if you can pull up expireds and withdrawns, they all, you know, they usually have fallen off the market because they're overpriced is the usual scenario. And so if they say, you know, I think my house is worth like $500,000, and you can point to a withdrawn or an expired one that says, well, this one thought it was worth that too, and it was on the market for 300 days, and then it expired, um, it kind of gives you an indication of what the market is doing. Today, we're going to use active, sold, and pending because we want to see what's current. So those are the three we're going to pick, active, sold, and pending. Active sold and pending property. How come I do not have anything on the right side of the steady? Um, uh, uh, yeah, but I think you. Uh, yeah, I have a lot of yeah, once yeah. you click on it, the others go away. So I, I, it looks like you're good. Go ahead and. Uh, yeah, yeah, let's see. Let's I'll try it. Buy let's it. get rid of the status. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, there we go. So now you've got to be building Area. Now, Karen's house is in Oakland, and it's an area 2608. So if you want to go ahead to Oakland, you can go ahead and, and pick it off the list, or you can type it in there. And how we found that, or how I know that, is because on our website, ebrdi.com, there's something there called an area locator, which will tell you what search area any property is in in Alameda and Contra Costa County. Are we all familiar with that tool at all? No? Yeah. Tell you which It'll tell you the like, tells you. right, because you know you want to keep your search into the same area as a subject property. Isn't it zip code in Oakland? Hmm? Is it just a zip code in Oakland? Oakland's the one exception. Oakland okay. is a zip code. Yeah. Uh, Berkeley, Alameda. Berkeley, they're not. Yeah. You can actually go in here and it'll. Yeah, and I'll, I'll show you that for you. But that'll be the one thing. Okay. That you'll do. <laughs> okay. Good. All right. <coughs> Calendars, right? All right. If we just leave it blank, it's going to go back 18 years and pull every bit of information it can possibly pull for this particular area. So the calendars are a little bit misleading. The list date equals active properties. Actives are active. We're not going to use the list date because actives are current, right? Off market date would equal expired and withdrawn properties. We didn't pick those for a, a, a search criteria, so we're going to leave that one blank. The beginning group? Yeah, leave it blank. It okay. But the closing date, that equals sold property. So let's go back in time. We're going to open up the closing date. And let's go back, uh, I don't know, three months. So we're in July now. Um, what do you think, June? April? Yeah, let's go back to April 1. So we'll go back to April, and then we'll click on number one. And the end date on Paragon, we're going to leave blank because the end date is always today. Now, if you were an appraiser and you were doing probates or um, divorce cases or you know that type of thing, you would use these differently. But we always kind of leave the end date blank because we want to know what the value is today. Uh, excuse me, Rick. When I click April one, yep. so when I close to this and cross this. Yes, because you see it's already in the box, right? Yeah, but that is July. Well, then you need to uh, click month. on April one. Click I, on number I, one. I click April. I click one when I close the box. Uh, no, so click on number one. Click on number one. There you go. Oh, Does okay. Good. Yeah. Okay. Good. Um, what's the next one down? Bedrooms, baths, and all that. Right. Oh, okay. Good. So Karen's house is a two-bedroom house, so we want to go a minimum of two and a maximum of two. 
a minimum of one bear.